Well, welcome to this first day of looking at frameworks, uh, this book that looks at the whole foundations of the Christian life and encourages us to build everything we believe about everything on the Lord Jesus Christ, the only one who can truly show us God. Uh, it was really good meeting with some people on Sunday evening, and I know that some people are joining through these YouTube videos. Uh, I hope you've had a chance to read the double page in the book. Uh, mine looks slightly different. This is a journey edition. The one that you've got uh, is a black one, probably. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon from Paul Blackham. Uh, it's Frameworks, Volume 1, Roots, and there are 30 days, uh, just a double A5 page, which we look at, uh, the one we're doing today is Jesus really is the living God. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to reflect on that. And uh, a while ago when I did this, uh, this issue gives you the opportunity of writing down your reflections as you go for it. Um, the thing that really grabbed me was all the different assumptions we make without even realizing it. Uh, you may have come across the term woke uh, that's around at the moment. Uh, it's much maligned by some people and loved by others. Uh, I read an article a while ago saying that all woke really means is paying attention to those things that you just assume and don't even realize about your situation or the way you're thinking. Uh, so the example was of uh, some fish running into an older, wiser fish. And uh, he says to them, uh, what do you make of all this water that we're in all the time? And the fish say, what's water? And you have that idea that the things we're swimming in we don't even realize we're in them. We can't even conceive of a, a situation that would exist without them. And uh, this first study looks at how those assumptions have slowly shifted down through church history, away from the only reasonable things we can build on and take for granted, uh, which are all found in Jesus and his person and his words, to thoughts about human religion or human philosophy or pagan thoughts really and uh, it struck me just what are the assumptions that we are bringing into the Christian life and judging Jesus with uh, the sidebar in the page today where uh, uh, Paul Blackham looks at examples in church history of where this particular issue he's discussing has been relevant spoke about Nicaea and the problem uh, raised by Arius um, a presbyter in the ancient church in uh, the early fourth century. And his assumption was that God could not come from someone else. You couldn't have a God who had his cause in someone else. So therefore, when you say that the son is begotten of the father, as Christian theology says, that must make the son a different sort of being infinitely higher than us, infinitely higher than the angels, but nonetheless a creature, someone who came from the real God, the true God. And of course, that contradicts the Bible, which is why the Council of Nicaea had to very strongly stress that Jesus coming from the Father was exactly his qualification for being the Son, for being truly God. And in our day, there are hundreds of things that we can say, well, God can't possibly be like this. And therefore, we find ourselves disbelieving the Bible and refusing to listen to Jesus. Uh, in the homework in this session, it goes back to that famous children's song section of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, you know, the wise man built his house upon the rock. And we're like, oh, yeah, we know what that is. It's unbelievably challenging to the way we understand the world to say we're going to begin with Jesus. We're not going to assume anything we're just going to listen to what he tells us about God, about reality, about ourselves, about how we see things. And really, the whole purpose of this course is trying to do that, trying to unearth the assumptions we're bringing into our understanding about God and saying, no, we're not going to have them. We're going to begin. We're not going to assume anything other than listening to Jesus, listening to what he tells us about reality and truth and beauty and goodness and ourselves and the world and what it means to be human and what it means to enjoy the good life. So I hope that's an exciting prospect for you to learn how to have Jesus as the foundation of everything we think, beginning with that highest of callings, understanding true things about God and filtering down to everything else. Uh, I hope we can do that together.